Hello, welcome back to our live show on a Thursday. Glad that James can rejoin us this week. Yeah, we've both been now been described as smug faces of, of we have, uh, yeah. local TV. Or, yeah, favourite uh, favourite people was, online. One of my favourite comments I saw recently, I said mm. I was smug. Mm. And it I, I got it, I got it first. You, you, were. So, you copied me. Ah, yeah, you, got, you claim the <laughs> distinction. Our guests... Uh, Looking quite happy. I wouldn't say it looks smug, but uh, we've got the no. world's top <laughs> cricket umpire here, Richard uh, Kettleborough. We have over here Richie Humphreys, who is the delegate liaison executive of the PFA. And that's all we've got time for. Right? <laughs> <laughs> the liaison executive. There are what several the of us. It's not just me. Well, no. This is your new role, because you were chairman, weren't you, for four years yeah. in the end, because your career carried on. Uh, well, when I had to step down for it as chairman when I, he asked to be a current player, the chairman of the PFA. Yeah. Um, so when I retired from playing, um, I applied for a job at the PFA. I was obviously very fortunate to get it, and that's my, that is the, the job title, delegate liaison. So just to briefly explain what that is, um, there are about six of us around the country, um, based in London, based in Manchester, oh. and we've got um, clubs uh, uh, designated to us. So I've got 18 clubs to look after. Um, and to deal with, to go into the club, see how the players are, um, deal with any upcoming issues um, that, that arise, whether it's contractual or disciplinary or anything like that. And then also to, to give advice, um, you know, maybe perhaps do a presentation on different issues that uh, current players face. And then obviously we've got 50,000 ex-members that when I am in the office um, will we'll call, whether that's um, an accident fund issue, a benevolent fund issue, an education issue, coaching, uh, and, and then put them onto those departments. But essentially, I'm the kind of, uh, uh, you know, the person that they can get in touch with, um, you know, on a daily basis through a, through a club delegate. Which all the clubs around here, then, basically. Pretty much yeah. all the clubs around here, and then yeah. a few journeys into the Midlands and, and then uh, a bit further south. Yeah. So, so you know, you talk about the issues. So gambling, drugs, post-career, all that kind of stuff, because they're making lots of headway. So you're obviously quite instrumental in that then, are you? In yeah, I think basically to, for me to go out and give a bit of an overview about each department that we've got, so whether it is further education um, whilst you are playing, what's that second career going to be like? How are you going to transist out of being a footballer? It will happen at some point. We can't ever dictate it. You're really lucky if you can dictate when you want to finish. Um, so whether you want to go into coaching, um, go into go, do a degree, go into something totally... Um, you know, off piece really, and yeah. something that's really niche to what you want to do, uh, but also making you know awareness about um, uh, gambling, as you said, um, making sure that you're not uh, passing on any inside information that can come back and you know you get in trouble for you, you end up missing football for really what you'd been thought was quite an innocent comment. Um, they said uh, drug awareness; it's your duty of care to make sure you know where. Uh, you, you've got to inform the FA where you are when you're not at the football club. And depression's a big issue within the game now, mm. within the whole yeah. of sport now, with so many competitors and some high-profile figures coming out and basically being very frank about this. And that's, a, I think that's that's really issue, a, a positive yeah. Yeah. thing in society. Really, I think people right. are more open to speak, and none more than you know, uh, professional sportsmen and women um, speaking openly about mental health issues. And so our well-being department again. We have a 24-7, uh, uh, 365 day of the year helpline. Um, it's there on the website, it's out on Twitter. People can phone that. There's counsellors around the country. And so it probably wouldn't come to me that. That would be somebody yeah. else. But it's up to me to make people aware of it. Yeah. And just on the jobs front as well, you know, at one time a footballer would either be a coach or a manager or a runner pal, be behind the bar. There was very little else. Mm. But what kind of trades are, are we now looking at them? Training well, for, yeah, for life beyond football. The, the, well, outside of what you know, coaching, and now there are more jobs in football. You know, strength conditioning, sports scientists, um, and people going into media, sports journalism degrees. Come and set your job, Alan. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. they can have it. But, but no, the wide range. Of, you know, people it's go and train. Well paid. I can't give it up. <laughs> <laughs> train to, you've got, got people training to be teachers, people training yeah. to be um, lawyers, people training to. Um, in, in, in lots of other different sectors, we had you know, some um, a former player who had a, a, a dog grooming business, and that's what he wanted to do, and he's now branched out and done two or three different uh, shops in different cities. So it, it, it's really up to the player what they want to do. We'll help and guide, and then actually support them and give right. them funding for it. If you weren't a cricket umpire, Richard, what would you be doing or fancy doing? Uh, I would have liked to have stayed in the game in some capacity, but it happens very similar in cricket as well with the PCA. Uh, a lad who I used to play cricket with at Yorkshire, Matthew Wood, is yeah. in a very similar 
role to what Richie is with the PFA. Mm. He goes around the probably Yorkshire, Durham, Lancashire, Notts, Derbyshire, doing very similar role to that. Yeah. And the opportunities now for ex-players is a lot more than what it ever was, even in my day when I played. You know, talk about James's uncle in a minute for a special reason. You don't know who James's uncle. Do you know my who cousin, James's Mike uncle? Simpson. Cousin. Mike yeah. Simpson. I know him very well. Yeah. Now then, how about these figures? Yeah. Just got them. Alan's got them. I have it. Yeah, I've got the figures written down. Uh, Sheffield Collegiate's Mike Simpson. Uh, oh, I'd like to speak to you at some stage, by the way. You're invited. To you won't get much out of him, I tell you. Really? Yeah. Is he a quiet man? Yeah, he's not here. Yeah. He's <laughs> unassuming. This score was recorded in the Sheffield Alliance Midweek League, what, just over a week ago? Yeah, was it? About late. a week ago. 304 not out by Sheffield Collegiate against Khan. This was at uh, Shirecliffe. Uh, of which, that 304 for no wicket, uh, Mike Simpson scored 237 off 62 balls. That's not bad, is it? It's it's quicker, than, quicker than your 24 and a half. Could be looking at an IPL contract <laughs> in the future. 36 is it? Yeah. yeah. 36 is a 29 ball century. <laughs> this is unbelievable. You've played with Mike, I'm guessing, yeah. Cats, yeah? Yeah, a little bit. I put, more, more, he was a real young lad when yeah. I sort of was playing at collegiate towards. Uh, the end of my playing days, but uh, strikes a clean. He ball. certainly does strike a very clean ball, yeah. But amazing. Those figures speak for themselves, don't they? Well, I, I was thinking short boundary, poor bowling, possibly, but it still takes some hitting. Great I effort. mean, he's, he's take me a se take me a season to get that. <laughs> <laughs> take me a career. Um, right, uh, ball tampering. Now it's been in the headlines massively, mm. isn't it? Because of what happened in Australia with the Australian captain and a couple of players there. Cameron Bancroft, etc. You would think that after such a high profile incident that cricketers, particularly at the top level, would think, hey, we, we're going to get found out here, we can't do it. And yet you've been officiating in West Indies v Sri Lanka and we've yeah. seen it happen again there. Unfortunately, yeah. Yeah. Uh, this involved, well, I've got a note here that this principally involved. Um, the Sri Lanka captain, uh, Dinesh Chandimal, yeah. uh, who was banned for the third and final test as a result, found guilty of changing the condition of the ball by applying uh, an artificial substance. Um, sal his saliva contained the residue of something he had in his mouth. She would be sweet or something like that. Yeah, I say unfortunately, because this is this is the second time that I've been involved in a thing like this. One with uh, this South Africa captain, Faf Duplessis, a couple of years ago. Mm. But just before this happened, uh, the ICC Cricket Committee, which I'm a member of, we'd met in Mumbai, and in light of what had taken place in Cape Town in, with the Australians, it was decided that the punishment doesn't fit the crime for changing the condition of the ball, so the punishments were going to go up, and they had to do, really. So this was relayed to all the teams around the world yeah. before this test series took place in the Caribbean. And I say, unfortunately, in the second test match, this happened. And mm. there's just no hiding place now for, for players. As we mentioned earlier, the amount of cameras that there are in international cricket, I think there's 40-odd cameras at a test match. Yeah. One will follow the ball every minute of the game. So there's no hiding place. And I say it's... It's not something we as umpires want to get involved in, but we are bound by the laws of the game to have to act you, upon this. You were the TV umpire on that particular critical yep. occasion, weren't you? Did, you? did you spot it happening at the time, or was it later? No, before? we didn't. No, we didn't. And it was we were made aware of it by the TV company. Right. Uh, and after viewing footage, it was quite evident what had taken place. So there was there were shots of a sweet going into a mouth and a yeah, the TV footage was damning. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah, and they've both, they've, all three of them, captain, coach, manager, have come out of it with six match bans. For what? You know, Not just for that, but for refusing to take the field, refusing to play. Yeah, it's a bit thick in it, really. You know, it's just a little bit. Absolutely. It's probably a bit of naivety there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you, but do you, do it's not what the game wants to see. No, of course it isn't. Do you, do you see it being a recurring problem, or do you think this will p put the lid on it and that people won't attempt? Because you, you made a comment that you know that. Sledging, as it's now called, has been prevalent. It's been there in cricket all the time. Has this kind of thing, in one way or the other, been there? You know, an attempt to scuff it, the ball, or you know, is it is it a fine line between 
polishing it and sort of doing something like that with it. There are, but or a bit uh, of dirt, dirt is in my the, law, the laws. The laws of the game are pretty black and white. Mm. The players know that. They know what they can and what they can't do, and they know they know now that if they get caught doing things like that, then the repercussions are going to be major. Yeah. Yeah. Just a bit. Talk about the ICC committee that you're on. Then who's yeah. on that committee, and what do you guys sort of talk about? And well, we talk about current issues in the game, yeah. actually, and we, we then make, out of that committee, we make recommendations to the Chief Executives Committee, which either get passed or they don't, but <laughs> there's a quite a few very well-known cricketers on that. The chairman is Anil Kumble, India. You have people like Andrew Strauss, Sean Pollock. You've got Raul Dravid, Mahela Jaiwardner. So there's some pretty high-profile guys. And, awesome. and, and you. Are, yeah. And I'm there as well as the umpires representative. Yeah, that's fantastic. Yeah, that's you don't it's, it's you great to be in that company. David Boone as the uh, right, match right. referees representative. So it's great to be in that company. And the talk, there's a lot of sense talk around that. Around yeah, that but table, I should think honest. there's a great deal of entertaining talk talked outside the committee room. Yeah, because you're in that. Yeah, company. yeah. I only knew a, I only knew a few of those guys from an umpire player relationship, and obviously you don't interact that much, but. Having got to know them after their playing days are finished, they're, they're really good guys. Football's a village as well. I mean, Wayne Rooney wants you to play in a testimony game or has done or something. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Who are we talking about? Yeah. <laughs> you mean Matt? Matt Rooney. Matt Rooney. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. Again, we've, Rune Dog. Rune Dog, we've we both known him for a long time. So, um, hopefully, people, you know, he's been at, at Sheffield Club for a long time, all time appearance record holder. Yeah. Um, and you know, if, if people go down and support his testimonial, I was really fortunate. I had a testimonial at Hartlepool. It's a great occasion. I just attended Tommy Lee's at Chesterfield. Yes, fantastic occasion for for anybody who's played at something. So we'd that encourage play, people to if they can go down and, and, and support somebody who's played for you know Sheffield Club. I was really I got to play for Sheffield Club for about six or eight games. Yes. My granddad played for him. My dad played for Hallam. And I was so honoured to be able to play for Sheffield FC and some, someone like Matt, who's you know, all-time record holder uh, appearances. A, it should be a great night for him to encourage people to go down. Yeah. He's a guest in a week, a week or two here. Yeah, I know he's watching avidly tonight because he, he told you it would send him to sleep or something. <laughs> he, he'll put it on at bedtime. He says we'll get to sleep, no problem. <laughs> Mentioning Tommy Lee's testimonial, uh, the happy scenario of looking at the National League ta table. Talk to James in a minute about this because he, he was down interviewing... You see Martin Allen earlier, yeah. actually. Yeah, yeah. He was interviewing Martin Allen for the BBC Radio Sheffield. Sheffield, yeah, 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 yeah. Top of the table? Is yeah, the and he kind of, you know, I said, you won't be really looking at that two games in, will you? And he went, both times I've won this league, I've been top from the first game to the last game, and then just stared at me. I was like, all right. <laughs> so I was like, you do look at it then. <laughs> he was like, yeah, I do, yeah. So, yeah. But he seems, you know, he seems like he's switched on and he's driven, isn't he? And, yeah, and yeah. Uh, best wishes to Adrian Whit Whitbread, his assistant, yeah. who uh, was taken to hospital, uh, had a bleed on the brain. Which good thing is he doesn't good. require surgery. Right. It's good news, and I think Martin Allen kind of relayed that. I think the statement that Chesterfield originally had put out was kind of, it sort of dumbed it down a little bit because I don't think they, they wanted to worry everyone and they wanted him to have his privacy and all that kind of stuff. But I think he kind of admitted, he said, look, it was a lot more serious than we let on, but thankfully it is actually OK. And he's so, talking yeah. and uh, just... Yeah, exactly. Rest. Yeah, needs a period of rest. Martin Allen's at uh, Chesterfield. What did you... I mean, as a former Chesterfield player, um, you know, and you'd, you'd seen good times and bad there. Um, great times under Paul Cook. Yeah. Uh, and then a gradual sort of very sad subsiding to going out of the league. What do you make of the situation there now? Well, I what Martin's done certainly is, is bring a positivity, I think. Um, you, you, can, you can tell that for just from going to Tommy Lee's testimonial, yeah. um, the atmosphere, um, people there f for Tommy, people there to see the new players, uh, people there to see the new manager. And, you know, what was a great occasion. They played well. Um, you know, what better start do they want? Back-to-back -back wins. Away from home on the first day, clean sheet. Follow up with a home game on a on a Tuesday night, another clean sheet. Um, as you said, he's probably smiling. You know, it, it, it doesn't, like I said, doesn't always define your season. But certainly, like we said, right at the top of the show, you can lose your first four and still have a good season. But there's nothing better than getting off to winning ways. And then it, a big thing for, for not just for the back four and the keeper, but for the whole team, two clean sheets. It breeds confidence. It, it breeds the um, a, a mentality that. You're going to go in the next game. Then how many can we win on the bounce? We had a great start of the championship year that we at, at Chesterfield. Um, I think we did lose in the cup on the Tuesday night, but we had a great start to that league campaign, and it, and it, and it does it takes you a long way.
Yeah, he's what? an effusive character. Effect. What I thought was really cool, a bit of insight. So when he was yeah. at Barnet, he um, he got them promoted when it was the final year of being called the conference. And he wrote the numbers 1 to 90 on a whiteboard in the changing room. And every game that they won, he'd get the man of the match up and they'd cross out points. So they obviously won the first couple of matches, scrubbed six out. And I asked him today, I said, have you, have you done a similar thing this year? And he went, how do you know about that? I said, just yeah. do. And he said, all right, well, I'm not talking about it. <laughs> so he obviously is. I mean, I'm guessing yeah. he is. And I think that's probably quite a good thing to do, isn't it? Because if it's up there, it's probably just in the back of your mind. Obviously, it doesn't affect the player, you yeah. know, what players you've got and how you're training yeah. day to day. But, but it's, it's a nice a psychological psych thing, psychology, isn't it? Psychology. So I thought that he's was He's really an uplifting character, it would seem. He's not somebody I know, but he's... You know, um, he could be energy. controversial. Yeah, I've met him a few times. He's yeah, been absolutely. He, he is that. He, he's, he's energy. I've played against his teams. They've always been high energy. Yeah. Um, when he was at Brentford, we had a really good battle through one season. Played him a few times in the league, obviously, and I think we had twice in the cup and a replay. So um, yeah. we had a real battle against his teams that season. I think he brought them up to Durham. Um, to, to the training ground when we, like, they were training the day before the game, made them all jump across the river in Durham. <laughs> and, you know, this yes. sort of thing, and he gets people together and he gets people uh, bonded. And uh, again, he, I know um, that he can draw on past experiences of being a winner and being, a, you know, winning championships and, and knows what it takes. And it might not be for everybody doing the, 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 the points yeah. on tally. People may say, well, we, we, we'd like to get this many points from this month. Mm. And you know, there's so many games over Christmas. How many points can we get? What's a re what's a realistic target? Um, you won't win every game. It, it, no. it's, a, it's a tough old ten months. Yeah. Um, Players seem to enjoy playing for it, don't they? It, I think it when, you're, when you're successful, everybody likes him playing, don't they? Yeah. And you, if you're winning titles, everybody you know got a medal around your neck at the end of the season. Yeah. You're going to be happy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mad well, Dog. What do you think of the nickname Mad Dog? <laughs> what does he think of it? Did you ask him that? Oh, no, I was, I, was giving it, I was giving orders actually by Andy Giddings. He said, "Don't call him Mad Dog. Walk in." First thing I see in his office, big shirt up on the wall, mad dog on the back. Yeah. Oh, so he does like being called it, but I'm not asking him. But you didn't ask him? No, of course okay. not. Andy is obviously... I think he's... And he didn't collect I think, he, I think, I think someone, <laughs> I think someone called him mad dog and he said, no, it's Martin. <laughs> well, right. Okay, you're not going to argue with him either, are you? I don't think so. Um, right. A bit of round up, bit of this, bit of that, what else? Yeah, it's probably be the most boring transfer window in the world, but Chris yeah. Wilde has urged Wilde people to keep a sense of perspective about Sheffield United's recruitment strategy. Uh, it's following quite a low-key deadline day, but of course the loan market is still open till the end of this month, and that's probably where the Blades um, are going to actually uh, try and uh, you know, reinforce that squad that they've got. They've seen Derby County gazump his move for Martin Waghorn earlier this week. Uh, so I think the loan market is probably the best bet. Um, we got Athletic, they did express an interest in Lee Evans this afternoon, um, but that's sort of fallen through. So Lee Evans will stay uh, permanently at was that uh, Sheffield time? United. Was that time to do the deal, was it? That yes, it, it was. was a surprise to but I think you could so probably see Paul Cook now coming in. For a, loan, for a loan, with a, with a view to a yeah, particularly team. if the player wants to leave, uh, yeah. yeah, and I think that's probably the thing. So all is not lost if Sheffield Wednesday fans were hoping to see the back of Kieran Westwood today, just purely I don't think for they were not many, I don't think purely for you know financial yeah. fair play and the wages that, and all that kind of. I think purely yeah. for that, you have got yeah. two good young goalkeepers as well, which are, you know I know you've talked about. Um, I think. Um, yeah, so, but that could still happen. He could get yeah. away on loan as well. Both in action, of course, this weekend. Hull are the visitors to Hillsborough. Um, the Blades are travelling to the capital. They play against QPR. That's after, um, well, three losses. One for Wednesday and two for United to open the season up. Uh, Sheffield United's ladies, they're not actually in action for another 10 days or so in the new Women's Super League too. But non-league, that has returned. Hallam FC, they mark the start of their new season with a 7-0 away win over Bolso, over Ben Thornton got a hat-trick in that one as well. Uh, you went to Drumfield Town on Tuesday night, am I right? Did. Yes, How I was did. That? It was good, very entertaining. Yeah. I was um, pleasantly surprised with the facilities down there. Uh, they've got a very good setup. They've got a lot of teams playing from a young age forwards. Uh, very friendly, and the manager is going to be on this show in a few weeks' time. Brilliant. So Scoreline? They won 3-1. Hey, they'll, uh, be, they'll be trying to draft you in to come to more games. Cause well, I've seen them twice now, and they've scored seven goals. They had a win at Hallam last season, 4-1, and I was there. So, I'm a, a, you know, they can't agree terms for me. Like, you know, <laughs> Too pricey. Terms I'll have to get you in the loan market, Alan. That's yeah. still open until the end of this month. Uh, Sheffield FC, they're not actually in action again until the 18th as well. Um, in boxing, Gavin McDonnell, local lad, his shot at the WBA Super Bantamweight title 
that's uh, bring, uh, been brought forward by a fortnight for money reasons. Uh, so he was meant to be fighting in uh, Los Angeles. Um, he's currently training in Dubai, but now it's going to be uh, in uh, Chicago. Um, and Kel Brook, well, I've actually heard whispers that he's actually in talks with Amir Khan. Of course, he had to pull out of the Dillian White, uh, Joseph Parker undercard at the end of July, uh, but he could be fighting in December against Amir Khan. So watch this space mm -hmm. on that one. Now, at Sheffield Eagles, Mark Aston, he's confident that his uh, fitness, full, fully fit squad, uh, could bolster their hopes of staying in the championship. Um, of course, rugby league, you know, they've, they've struggled this season. Yeah. Were they going to have a team the last couple of years? We've asked no. that question at the start of the, the season. The yeah, exactly. Well, it's, you know, they've got a really yeah. tough game on Sunday away at Lee Centurions. That's three o'clock uh, kickoff. Um, so, yeah, so all the best to the Eagles in that Indeed. one. It'd be great if they could stay up as well. And Yorkshire in T20 blast action, actually, tonight as well at Headingley. Let's just see how they're getting on, shall all we? Right, yeah, you do. Yeah, because um, you're a bit better at this sort of Stuff yes, I am getting tweets yeah. and stuff oh, 130 for two with eight overs left. Right. So they're absolutely whacking it. Yeah, so that's not bad, yeah. is it? That's yeah. not bad. They've got some dangerous players. Yorkshire. Ten, no, yeah, really ten ten over, destructive. Over David Willey, 80 or 43 balls. Tom Collar, Cadmore, yeah. 42 or 28. I, Very I, good. I, I met one of your uh, fans today at uh, Abidal Park. Yeah, because I went to watch uh, the MCC game or part of it, and I know you were there as well. He was talking about the show and he watched it every week, and he said. The only thing that's missing is you, you never mentioned hockey. Bit of hockey, yes. Yeah, so so hockey. tell James Greg. I know Sheffield Hallam ladies, they've been promoted from into right. the Yorkshire fourth division. They've won the fifth division. Ramped to romp okay. home. But, but that's all I can tell we've you. Got a, yeah, we've got a National League <laughs> senior team in Sheffield, apparently. And I'm as ignorant and as yeah, much to blame as we'll you. We'll try and cover more your so. club next week. Yeah, we'll, we'll try and give it more of a... I mean, Billy, Billy Root's a hockey star as well. Isn't he, he is indeed, yeah. I yeah. won't tell you what he calls it. He's got a de derogatory name for it, but I can't <laughs> possibly re repeat that on here. Right. So what's the weekend hold for you, Chad? Are you going to a game at the weekend, Richie? No, I'm not going to a game this weekend. Oh, you're going on holiday, are you? I'm going on holiday. Ah, yeah. wonderful. Yeah, In the football going? season, which is a... <laughs> it's a crime. Well, well, it's, a, well, it's never been done. A luxury. Um, yeah. Well, certainly not. Cheap since flights. Eh? First time... In the, what, in the school holidays. <laughs> yeah, good point. <laughs> First time you've ever been able to do that. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah. And uh, you've got some more holidays, so... <laughs> They're still trying to get me to play cricket for collegiate this weekend. Are you going to play? No. Why not? Because Hillsborough. I'd much rather go to Hillsborough and watch Wednesday with my little lad. Go to church. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Yeah. I once got a hat-trick at Norton Oaks, if that's any good, under <laughs> Sheffield Collegiate under-15s. <laughs> did you? <laughs> did you? Did you? Bad. Certainly did. Bowling what? Medium pace spin or something or what? Um, bowling. I won't yeah. say what pace it was. Not on a length. Slow medium. But yeah. it took three wickets. Excellent. I think. The, do you well know what? Done. The ball's still at my mum's. Well done. Is it? That trick ball, yeah. I, I see you there coaching your kids uh, on a Saturday so when they're not, when you're not required to play. And one of them's very talented at football, isn't he? I think he's with the Wednesday set, uh, uh, set yeah. up academy. Yeah, he's in the under eights now, Jack. Yeah. Um, under the guidance of John Mason. Uh, absolutely loves it. Can't wait Excellent. to get there on an evening. Excellent. Uh, he's a and handy showing, cricketer as well. And showing a bit of promise. So, Is yeah. He? Yeah. He's, uh, Which of the two he's not played reckon? much cricket this summer because he's been pretty into his football so with the World Cup as well yeah he's going all right but you know very young but uh, okay. he's enjoying it and improving so good yeah. on him keep the coaching going thanks very much chaps that's the end of our time I think your third visit actually Richie Thank I think it's yeah. Richard's well, yeah. Patrick Patrick yeah, yeah. <laughs> two hat-tricks two hat-tricks two hat-tricks with your cricket two ball rooms. Rooms. <laughs> two, uh, two more great guests including a footballer cricketer back from the old days next week on the show Richie thanks so much Richard and Pleasure. James on my YouTube channel later if you missed. See you next week. Bye-bye.